Boom! We are live, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to the Nolan Hawkeye Anthony YouTube channel. And I thank all of you for being here, wherever you may be. And of course, however you may be listening. So <clears throat> I was really debating whether to make this video or not uh, because I... I believe that I am a very transparent, honest person, uh, especially when it comes to kind of what goes on in the world, human nature, everything. I My whole life, I've always cared about facts, truth, um, and things like that. <clears throat> so I know that there will be some who definitely don't see see it the same way as me and that's okay i'm i'm totally okay with that you know at the end of the day if you want just another status quo uh mainstream take there's plenty of podcasts that offer that uh me that that ain't me bro that is not me so <clears throat> and it's never been me from, from the moment that I started making these types of videos, uh, doing Facebook Live, uh, whatever the case may be, I have been transparent. And the thing is, is that all of us have biases. All of us have uh, worldviews and things like that. So I just want to get that out of the way. The topic, of course, is Iowa defeating LSU. This is not going to be a normal post-game reaction like I would do for Iowa playing Ohio State football or something like that because there's a lot of other things at play here. Now, of course, Iowa women, the Iowa women's basketball team did defeat LSU. Uh, they had their revenge, for lack of a better term, on LSU after losing to LSU in the national championship game last year. And Caitlin Clark absolutely went off. I'm going to show the box score here. I mean, she she really is incredible. Um, and uh, ultimately, I think it probably is the right decision for her to forego her fifth year of college el eligibility especially if she ends up winning a national championship. I mean, what she has been able to do for Iowa as a program is as foundational and meteoric as what a uh, Christian Leitner did for Duke or a Magic Johnson did for Michigan State or a um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar uh, who at the time was actually Lou Alcindor, what he was able to do for UCLA or, or, or even Bill Walton. So that is how foundational she is. Okay. Now, personally, uh, I'll just be completely honest, guys. I, I don't tune in to the lady side of things as often as I do the men's, but I do definitely pay attention and, you know, if you want to be mad at me for that, so be it. It is what it is. Uh, but I I always root for Caitlin Clark and uh, and the women's team to win. One thing, so let's, so these are the stats, and then I'm going to get to everything else. So the stats, you know, LSU, she had 17 points, Angel Reese, uh, Haley Van Lith who a lot of people were hoping she would come to Iowa since she was friends with Caitlin Clark. She had nine points, and of course she decided to go to LSU. Huh. And Caitlin Clark had 41 effing points. Unreal. 12 assists, seven rebounds. She just totally dominated. And Kate Martin, 21 points, six rebounds, is really good. Uh... And Sydney Alfalter, who has come on late, uh, I believe due to an injury to one of Iowa's main players uh, before she got injured. I'm blanking on which player that is. Let me see if I can maybe find that real quick. Um, 
Is it Molly Davis? I think that's who it is. Um, she was the one who was injured, and I believe she was a mainstay. Yeah, this is who it was, Molly Davis. She was a very important player on this Iowa women's basketball team. And it looks like she's still out. There were those who were um, hopeful that she would be able to return for the NCAA tournament. And so when you really think about it, the fact that Iowa has been able to do this, even with her injury, is quite astonishing. I mean, let's look at what she was averaging <coughs> for Iowa. 6.1 points per game. So, I mean, she by no means was she a stud but she was definitely a contributor i would liken her to like a like a patrick mccaffrey or like a josh dix at at some points in the year or like a lagi dembele or you know somebody who contributes but is maybe not a star player for the team but either way you know she's a senior she probably provides leadership to the team and it was a, a big loss. And uh, this Sydney has given huge minutes. I mean, to score 21 points in a Elite Eight game is huge. So anyways, those are the stats. All right. So let me talk. Uh, and Iowa obviously has moved on. Let me see if we know who they're going to play next. They're going to play UConn, which is a huge game. I mean, this... I mean, UConn is like, with Oriyama, uh, he definitely had some interesting comments uh, this year on Caitlin Clark. I mean, UConn is like the cream of the crop. They are, like when you think of college women's basketball, you think of UConn. That is who you think about, is UConn. Now, I know of late, maybe UConn has not been as dominant as they were uh, with with some some of the ladies that have been some of the best players to come through uh, college basketball. I'm trying to uh, think of a few. Let me see if I can get that pulled up. So that's going to be a huge game. All right. Um, let's type in UConn. And UConn has Paige Buecher, who... She, a lot of people thought that she was going to be the Caitlin Clark. And I mean, she's done well, Paige has, but, you know, Caitlin Clark has definitely gone to a different stratosphere. And of course, Paige got injured. Um, and I think they were in the same recruiting class. Let's, I'm going to type in popular. So either way, UConn is the cream of the crop. Everybody knows that. I remember at one time, uh, Sue Bird, Tina Charles, uh, Diana Taurasi is who I'm thinking of, Brianna Stewart. Uh, they were dominant with Brianna Stewart. Maya Moore, uh, those would be the three main ones that that I can think of in, in my time has been Maya Moore over here. Uh, Brianna Stewart and Deanna, uh, Diana Taurasi. Uh, Brianna Stewart was in high school when I, or was in college when I was in high school and they were just dominant. They, they totally uh, won nonstop. Now, like I said, over the last four years, UConn is, has still been good, but not as dominant as they have been as some other programs like Iowa, Louisville, LSU have emerged. All right. So I was going to play UConn. That's going to be awesome. Awesome game. So let me move to what I want to talk about. <clears throat> and in nature, this may be slightly political, slightly non-basketball related, and all of that. So you've been forewarned. Okay. So number one, let me start here. So <clears throat> in America, there is tremendous push for women's sports and and there's you know the whole pay gap situation and and all of that you know you guys know that I believe in capital capitalism I've said that multiple times uh and you know especially in entertainment and um entertainment 
uh, sports, which is a, a certain level of entertainment. Oftentimes, what directly impacts the the pay of players is the amount of tickets and merchandise and money that their league is able to generate. And now I'm not going to comment on that too much. That's that's a different video, and I'm not trying to make this into that video. And and even with me saying that, I guarantee there's going to be some people. Well, no, the nuts not even right. They make all time. They make all kinds of money. You, you know, I, I even with that, I know there's probably going to be somebody in the comments who says, "Well, you're you're ill informed. You're you know all of that," which is fine. But <clears throat> it's very interesting to note that the college women have actually drawn more eyeballs than the WNBA, and not only that. But college in both men's and women's has drawn comparable, if not numbers that are surpassing within the NCAA tournament, that is. Man, my allergies are killing me. That are more at times than the NBA and definitely comparable. So what does that tell you? That tells you that when there are interesting storylines, when there are interesting players and uh people all of that it is possible to actually generate the the eyeballs and and the revenue that you are looking for and whatever side you fall on the whole pay gap and and all of that there is legitimate interest in Iowa or in women's basketball. And a lot of that has to do with Caitlin Clark and hell. A lot of that has to do with Angel Reese. You know, a lot of these girls have big personalities and they show it off. So I think that that's very interesting. I, I do. And I think that that says a lot about, and this would be more in line with kind of the, capitalistic side of things that you don't need to force people to watch your sport or or beat them over the head with guilt on on all these issues and things like that you need to just have a good product and when you have a good product pe people will put their fannies in the seat and put their eyeballs on the screen and you're seeing that with the NCAA tournament there's legitimate storylines. There's legitimate interest. The actual product on the court is great. And there's a lot of people tuning in. Okay. That's just the fact. And so I think that that is a good argument for the side of things where you say, have a good product, put it, you know, uh, there's no need to force anybody to do anything and, and make people feel guilty for not watching, put a good product out there and people will watch okay the next thing i want to talk about <clears throat> is <clears throat> i said in my previous videos that <clears throat> i knew that this was going to become polarized that it was going to become racial and that a lot of the discussion surrounding this was going to be non-basketball related now, I want to talk on the Angel Reese side of things, okay? So, <clears throat> and I told you guys, as an official, what, what we're seeing is not surprising to me because, you know, there there are different cultures, there are different upbringings, and they have their own unique style and, and things that, that they bring to the game, okay? Now, with that said... And I want everybody to feel like they can truly be who they are. I, as you guys know, I believe in transparency, honesty, and, and being who you are. But Angel Reese, you know, she had the post-game interview. And I'm going to link a good react, that a video that I think is a good reaction video. The channel is called, and I'm going to link it in the comment section. Let me see here. It's called uh, The Poor Man's Podcast Reacts. He's got 831,000 subscribers, and I'm going to link his reaction 
in the comment section. But in the post-game video, Angel Reese says, I've been attacked so many times. All this has happened since I won the national championship. And, you know, the thing is, is that, Honestly, honestly, that is nonsense, okay? You, you're not receiving criticism because you won a national championship. That's not why, okay? You receive the, the criticism that you receive, and listen, I would never advocate for like legitimate, disgraceful comments or, or anything below the belt. And I know at times maybe that can be subjective, but... The bottom line is, and, and this is something that frustrates me with today's day and age, is you have, like like with Caden Proctor, for example, you'll have Caden Proctor say that, you know, fans are crazy and that they throw all this shade at me for the decision to go to Alabama and... uh basically intimating that fans are a-holes for giving him any sort of pushback for dumping Iowa at the last second and going to Alabama. And I always say, guys, that these players are earning way too much money now to purely consider them as kids. They're not kids. They're young adults, but they're not kids. And th they are of the age to vote, uh, and they're near the age to they, they can serve in the military and they're near the age of being able to drink alcohol. They are in the limelight. Okay. And with that comes a certain amount of criticism. It just is what it is. Even me just doing this YouTube channel, it would be silly of me to come on here and whine about people having negative comments to me. But the thing is, at the end of the day, I don't have to do this YouTube channel. It comes with the territory. It is what it is. And I think oftentimes these days, especially with athletes, they not only are they in the limelight, but some of them as Angel Reese is, is like majorly in the spotlight. And when they do things like flipping off the crowd or, you know, do, doing whatever this or or I, maybe that was Caitlin Clark. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, or like doing this, saying bye, bye, Felicia, you know, all that good stuff. You're going to get people who don't like that. I mean, it, it's just the way it is. Not and and just in life, not everybody's going to like you. A anybody who is has any modicum of success is going to have haters. That's just the way it is. It's human nature. And as a Christian, I believe this majorly. It is human nature to have jealousy for those who are doing things that maybe you are not or wish you could do. Now, the real test is you being able to catch yourself and tell yourself, no, that's irrational. It's not their fault. In fact, they're doing exactly what they should do. They're doing great. They're working hard and they're successful. You know, and that's even myself. I always remind myself of that. And I'm a big believer that there's, there is more than enough to go around. So me looking at somebody else and saying that you have this, therefore I don't have that is illogical it's a fallacy it's nonsense so people are jealous okay now i'm not saying that every critique of angel reese is is out of jealousy in fact i don't think that that's the case but in general when you are successful or in the limelight you're going to have criticism human nature is to be judgmental okay and to have a certain level of jealousy. People, as I always say to Iowa fans, people pay money to watch sports, to uh, engage in sports and be a part of sports. And with that, they have the right, especially with freedom of speech, to say what they want to say. Now, like I said, I think you should always keep it above the belt 
but still you have the right to critique. I totally disagree with people who are like, you know, especially with Iowa fans who are like, uh, no, you're not a true Iowa fan. A true Iowa fan would support Kirk Ferentz or, or so-and-so no matter what. I totally disagree with that. So Angel Reese, let's let's bring this back to Angel Reese. People are not hating on her because she won a national championship. They're hating on her because her style is kind of in your face. She, she shoves her excellence in your face. She does it on the basketball court and she does it in her personal life. And you know what? More power to her. If that's what she wants to do, so be it. But to not expect a certain amount of criticism when you are that abrasive, that confident, that outgoing in, in, in putting yourself out there is, is, is crazy. It, that's ridiculous. You know, um, in the video that I'm going to link, there is a clip that he shows where Angel Reese does like a Vogue magazine shoot I'm, pro I'm sure you could probably find it on YouTube if you wanted to. Here, let me, matter of fact, let me see if I can find it. And in it, she, she is very blunt about how she, she says that she's a queen, that, um, that she is unapologetically her. And if that's the case, okay, so be it. That's fine. I'm cool with that. You know, but if you really are unapologetically you, then if you get criticism, you shouldn't really be that upset because you're unapologetically you, regardless of people giving you hate or love. See, a lot of people will be unapologetically them when people are supporting them and giving them love and support and adoration. And giving them that that fire, that 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 love. Yeah, I can't I can't see it. But you know, we live we live in a day a day and age now where you know players are no longer just players, no longer just athletes. In fact, it was like a big old thing started starting in like 2010 where, you know, LeBron James, I think was wearing the shirt more than an athlete. You know, they want to be seen as more than just an athlete. And it's like, okay, I'm fine with that. But you're gonna, you're gonna receive pushback. You know, as Spider-Man said, with great power comes great responsibility. You know, so... I just, I don't agree with her. Um, I don't agree with her sentiment. Uh, you know, like, look at this. Uh, Angel Reese on online abuse. You know, it, I just, I just don't agree with that sentiment. You know, um, just because somebody gives you critique and doesn't like your abrasive personality doesn't mean that they're abusing you. Um, it, you know, that's, that's crazy. So I, I can't find the photo shoot, but she definitely was, like I said, in the, in the, um, in the comment section, I will, in the comment section, I will, uh, post another video. So let's just, like, I just want to show you guys, like, some of what I'm talking about. You know, like, uh, you know, she definitely has attitude, guys. You know, and she is definitely a talker and very abrasive and in your face, which, again, is fine. But it's it's like somebody going, it's like somebody going in the lion's den, putting their hand inside a lion and crying wolf when the lion snaps its mouth on your hand. That it's ridiculous.
So that's kind of my thoughts on it. And, you know, Caitlin Clark is the opposite. You know, Caitlin Clark definitely is passionate, but she is very humble. She is, uh, you know, I don't think that you would ever see Caitlin Clark doing a photo shoot. And in the photo sh so number one, I don't think you would see that period. And number two, and by the way, LSU's coach Kim is crazy as I mean, she uh, she to me gets away with a lot of nonsense. She really does. But that's neither here nor there. So this is she fouls out in the Elite Eight and the fans are waving goodbye. So, you know, it's just part of the game, guys. Like, I I just think in America these days, th there's so much sensitivity. Uh, everybody wants to be loved by everybody. Uh, no matter what they do, they don't want to be held accountable. And that's really kind of what I'm talking about here is accountability. Like, I'm not saying uh, personally, I think Angel Reese did anything bad or anything like that. Like, it's awesome that she has made it to the division one level. Like she is a top 1% athlete guys. I played division one water polo. I know how difficult it is to make it to this level. Okay. All of that is awesome. But if you want the smoke of, and the popularity that comes with doing photo shoots and, and, uh, waving at people and, and being a poor sport at times. If you want to be and act like the villain sometimes, don't be upset when people think you are the villain. So it just is what it is. But um, there was actually some, and you know, there were people, ESPN was saying that, uh, you know, we need to get to a place where we only critique them for their basketball um uh, for their all only their basketball skills and and their on the court stuff and it's like okay okay right right so you know if 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 a player does something outside that is horrendous and commits a horrendous crime are we not allowed to judge that and and call that out and say that that's bad So, I mean, that that's pretty much that. Um, so my closing thoughts here, again, it's awesome that um, Iowa is playing in the final four. Caitlin Clark has turned, it has been as important to Iowa as uh, Joe Monte, or uh, as, I don't know, trying to think of some other examples, as Tim Tebow has been to Florida or Johnny Manziel to Texas A&M, or there are some people who come through the ranks that are that important. And I used to not think this, but she, she has definitely surpassed Luca Garza as far as importance to their specific sport and, and program. She, she's huge. She is massive. Um, she has, Tons of commercials. Uh, you know, I officiate uh, college and high school uh, girls lacrosse, and all the girls know Caitlin Clark. You know, uh, I wore an Iowa shirt to one of the games, and all the girls were like, Do you know who Caitlin Clark is? Do you know who Caitlin Clark? I mean, it was insane. So, um, and just to finish my previous point about wanting the smoke as it seems Angel Reese wants, you would not see Caitlin Clark. I, I would be stunned to see Caitlin Clark doing a photo shoot one. And if she did, I would be doubly stunned if she referred to herself as queen and said that she was unapologetically her. I would be stunned to hear that. And, you know, I, just on the Angel Reese front, I don't think I've heard any men on the men's side saying, 
you know, that that they're kings and they're unapologetically a king. <laughs> Anyways, my final thought. So that's just my thought on the Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark dynamic. OK. It, in life, if you're in the limelight, if you are. And not only are you in the limelight, but you're very outspoken, outspoken in the limelight, you're going to receive a certain amount of pushback. It just is what it is. And I would love to see Angel Reese kind of take on the Kobe mentality of, all right, let's go. Let's fine. Fair enough. I am who I am. And moving forward that way. My final thought is Caitlin Clark. So <clears throat> her going to the WNBA, I think she may struggle a little bit. Not with the on-the-court stuff, but with the culture of the WNBA. And I don't want to get too deep into this, but, you know, you look at the college landscape and you can easily see that each program has a culture, okay? And what Iowa's culture is, is not by and large what the status quo is in the WNBA. And we've even seen comments. Uh, we've seen former high level women's basketball players commenting on Caitlin Clark and saying that, you know, that she's going to have issues in the WNBA. And I think that culturally, she may struggle a little bit. Um, you know, we've already seen the racial stuff. Uh, you know, she's dating uh, McCaffrey, so it doesn't look like, you know, she is a certain direction, <laughs> if you catch my meaning. And whereas in the WNBA, there tends to be a lot of that. Um, so I think she might have some issues. Now, ultimately... I think she'll be fine because she is such a a uh, genuine, seems like a very nice young lady and fun and, and happy, go lucky and all of that good stuff. But I don't think it'll be as smooth a transition as some people think, but time will tell. Time will tell. So that's my thoughts on all of that. Very happy about Iowa winning. Uh, and like I said, I was debating whether to do this video or not, because for the most part, I want to keep this video purely on sports. But I think that this is a unique situation. And so I just wanted to talk about it a little bit. All right, guys, like, comment, share, subscribe. Even if you disagree with me, drop a comment. It helps the engagement of the video. And I would be more than willing to hear how I am wrong as long as it is respectful. And even if it's not respectful, your boy knows what the deal is here. Uh, and last but not least, DBAP, don't be a pussy will on facts or feelings because your feelings just don't matter. Love you guys. See you guys next time. Go Hawks. Bye-bye.